Morning everyone, welcome to The Lookout. We're gonna jump right in and talk about Caldor Fire again. Here in South Lake Tahoe. White line on this map shows where the fire was 24 hours ago. Um, there hasn't been a lot of spread or any spread really that I can tell of into the um, communities. Uh, the white line showing where the fire was yesterday. And so, um, see there's some spread if we're looking you know, here's the airport in Myers um, there's been some spread downhill here um, but not towards the community at this time um, the black lines are bulldozer lines and the white line is as I said fire spread so you can see that uh, the fire hasn't really spread much at all on this flank that's closest to the community um, and the spread we have had here is kind of downhill and hasn't you know it's not a huge amount of spread in the last 24 hours. Looking east over the head of the fire, uh, there was a run yesterday afternoon. Uh, this imagery is from last night at 9.30. So there was a bit of a run on the south flank of the fire uh, driven by the train and the wind, really similar to what we saw when the fire made the big run a couple days ago. So here we're looking up Christmas Valley. Sorry about that fuzz. Um, not a lot of spread over here um, at Echo Lake. A little bit of um, you know what we call rollout. So um, you know when fires are burning on steep ground, they burn snags and logs and other material that's kind of been held in place by gravity, and then that stuff rolls downhill as it burns. And so that's kind of the, one of the primary mechanisms for fire spreading downhill. Uh, you know, the fire can come back slowly downhill, but then rollout can carry, you know, sometimes a burning round of firewood or, you know, a chunk of log can roll, you know, all the way to the bottom of the hill. So rollout is, um, you know, something that makes it hard to contain fires on steep slopes. You know, the only tool we really have against rollout is sometimes we'll dig trenches. But even then, you know, if a big chunk of burning wood comes bouncing down a hill, it's just like a rock and it can bounce over. So uh, makes, it makes it tough to secure the downhill side of a steep fire. Anyway, so we've had some spread downhill towards Upper Echo Lake here. Uh, you know, not a significant amount. And the good thing about this kind of fire spread is it's not like um, a head fire where flames are ripping up a tall tree and spotting a long way. So backing fire, we're a lot less likely to get um, long distance spotting. And the spotting is something we have been concerned about here on this flank of the fire, uh, just as far as those you know, small spot fires jumping from well, island to island of vegetation. So on the infrared last night, you know, we're not seeing, um, picking up any spots out here in the granite to speak of. So we're going to go around the fire like as we have been in a kind of clockwise direction. Um, here we're looking at um, south flank of the fire, south of Strawberry. We've been talking about this for a few days, just um, how we expect the fire to keep moving up Canyon here. Um, we're not seeing really. Um, significant rates of spread there, but there is a bit going on, um, you know, little runs. And this is, you know, kind of typical is that we get runs where we have what we call alignment. So in places the fire can push up a canyon or push up a little gap, um, the fire will make a run and where it's sheltered from the wind, uh, you know, we got a lot less um, spread here kind of across in, on average across this flank. Um, Fire has continued to move a bit over some bulldozer lines that held for almost a week. Uh, one thing we talk about on the Lookout blog today is just that, you know, as we push in all this dozer line, there's a lot of work to actually turn it into a, a viable fire line. Crews have to come along with chainsaws and cut down dead trees. And often if we don't do that, then, you know, the line might hold for a while, but then if a, a dead tree catches on fire and falls over the line, it can compromise the line. So um, this fire is on the move, but um, there are more those lines out ahead of it, and we expect it to keep outflanking us over here anyway um, until we have you know, the time and resources and priority to get in and work that. So you know, it's kind of hard to say if this, you know, it's possible that this piece of fire will eventually burn out to the rest of the fire, and a lot of that depends on weather. Coming around here by Kirkwood, there still hasn't been really any spread into the resort itself, but the fire has you know, after taking its time getting through the granite here, the fire has kind of got back into more continuous fuels and made a pretty good push um, off to the east. 
um, across the dozer line. You know, just one thing we're seeing in general on all of the fires this year is that dozer line really isn't holding fire very well at all. The only time that dozer line really is working at our advantage is if it's on the flank of the fire where the fire is kind of hitting it um, obliquely or if we have time to get out in front and do a firing operation and create depth. You know, when we say depth, we mean, you know, that we remove fuel for hundreds of yards, if not a quarter of a mile. Um, unless we can create that depth, then the fire can just spot. And since this fire is spotting up to half a mile when it makes runs, you know, those lines really don't buy as much. I think it's one of those things we need to look at, you know, when we look back at this year, is you know we've put a time, amount, an enormous amount of time and energy into building dozer lines all over the landscape for these fires, uh, but under the conditions we have, they don't really buy as much. It's, so it's kind of like a it's a habit we have that we throw dozers at every fire, but especially in these kind of sensitive alpine ecosystems, um, the dozer line often causes worse damage than the fire itself, especially in a fire adapted ecosystem where we need fire. So you know um, I talk about that a little on my. Um, post on a Dixie fire today. Um, it's just, I think, something we need to talk about is, you know, hey, we know these things aren't holding up. So under these conditions, why do we throw so much in? You know, can we be more strategic about where we put them and only engage with them if we know we have the resources to actually hold them? Otherwise, we're just carving up the landscape and we end up with a whole lot of those lying inside of our burn. Coming up past Kirkwood, um, with this white line showing 24 hour spread, the fire does continue to spread a little into this bowl to the west of Kirkwood. Uh, we've seen that for a few days now. Um, coming out here towards Silver Lake, the fire is continuing to spread through the granite, um, but it is spreading slowly. Coming up here to the Highway 88 and Mormon Immigrant Trail um, Junction, and we talked about some spots we saw over here the other day. I um, still think those are probably just bad IR data. There's been no spread there, and this whole perimeter along the Mormon Immigrant Trail into 88 is holding really well. Yellow shows that the fire is cooling down and just has isolated spots of heat. Um, whole south flank is looking pretty good. I don't have anything to report there. You know, it's not even showing any scattered heat when we get down here towards Omo Ranch. Just you know, really small pockets. This is held for now for over a week around this corner here um, to the west of Somerset. Coming up here um, east of Pleasant Valley, there still has been some action here um, and some good firefighting work to just hop on spots that are still hot in these canyons. Um, there were some pretty enormous fuel loads of, you know, giant manzanita and, and other um, heavy fuels in these canyons. So, you know, it's not surprising that there, there's a lot of lingering heat. But this whole flank of the fire now headed up E16, up to Sly Park, looks great. Um, don't really see any major heat on this whole flank until we get back to Highway 50. And now we're looking up Highway 50. And here to the um, west of Whitehall, there is quite a bit of heat. This is the Plum Creek drainage. It's still within the interior of the fire. And so even though there's a bunch of new heat here, it hasn't pushed any farther outside of where it was in the last 24 hours. Coming up to Kuipers, um, everything's still cooling down. The big story on this flank has just been that um, as we Look at the north side of the fire um, with strawberry over here on the uh, kind of towards the right. Um, and I apologize, I'm using my laptop here and it doesn't show my mouse. So uh, sorry you can't see any of this stuff where my mouse is pointing. Um, anywhere on this north flank here um, up towards Wright's Lake, north of um, Highway 50, there's been a lot of heat here in the last couple of days. The fire didn't spread. Um, significantly in the last 24 hours. It has spread some. Um, the terrain is kind of such that we can't put those lines right up against the fire here. Uh, but the good news is just that there's, you know, there has been spread towards Wright's Lake, but it's been really minor in the last 24 hours. Um, the fact that the rest of the fire in you know, South Lake Tahoe has been cooling off is good because it gives us a few more resources to work on this. But this is, you know, um, it's not an insignificant amount of fire line to have to put in. Uh, even though it looks small, you know, compared to our 200,000 acre fire. Um, you know, if this fire was burning by itself, it would still take a lot of work to put it out. So um, we talk, we've talked about, you know, just the amount of resources it takes to um, deal with a fire this size. And even what seems like a small portion of the overall fire could still be a lot of work. You know, this fire burning by itself would still be a, a fairly major incident, just this orange area. 
that brings us back around to Echo Lake where we already looked. You know, just another quick look out here where we talked about um, being above Fallen Leaf Lake, uh, not seeing really any sort of new um, spot action out there. Anyway, that's the um, that's your call to our fire update for the third of September. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, it takes a long time for us to, um, you know, get these things buttoned up and be able to repopulate. You know, uh, so if you're evacuated, you know, it, it's still going to be a while. Hang in there, people. Um, everything's looking pretty good over here, and uh, be giving you another update tomorrow morning.